All right, let's talk about the balancing of redox reactions once again with a second example. Uh, this time I have a permanganate reacting with tin zero. If we look at the electrode reduction diagrams, we see that permanganate is the most oxidized version of manganese and neutral tin is the most reduced version. So here, once again, we have uh, the possibility for multiple products. Uh, so the prediction, unless I give you some extra information, it's going to be uh, very difficult for you to determine where you're stopping. But the key idea, once again, is that you have to um, yield products that will end up overlapping with each other. So for instance, uh, we know that permanganate is going to have to go down in the diagram just to match up with tin, and tin is going to have to go up. So the possibility of manganese stopping a manganese 4 oxide and tin stopping at tin 2 plus is not an option because those two don't overlap with each other. On the other hand, tin turning into tin 4 oxide and manganese stopping a manganese 4 oxide, that could work because they overlap. But at the same time, manganese going all the way down to manganese 2 could be over, can still overlap with tin 4, but it also overlaps with tin 2. So in the absence of extra info, it's not exactly clear where you would end up. In this example, I'm going to pick um, manganese 2+, plus, which is typically you know the, the product you get for manganese, but it's not guaranteed. And I'm going to take um, tin all the way to tin 4, right? So without any extra info, you predicting those specific products will probably, it has it has a percentage of likelihood of you selecting those two, but it's not guaranteed. So I will have to give you extra info for you to figure out where you're stopping. Or I will have to just tell you what the products are. Now, one thing I'm going to do to simplify the problem is I'm just going to write tin 4 plus in this reaction. I want to keep it in acidic solution too. But we're dealing with tin 4 as a product. So um, I'm going to balance this via the direct method first. So we balance anything that's not oxygen or hydrogen. That's the first step. And we have one manganese on the left side, one manganese on the right side. So that's okay. We have one thing on the left side and one tin on the right side. So that's also balanced. So we move on to now looking at the electrons. And in order to do that, we need to look at the individual charges, keeping in mind that oxygen will be two minus in charge. And um, if you have any protons, the protons will be plus one. Um, all right, so we're going to use that information to figure out the charge of manganese on the reactant side. We only have one manganese, so one manganese times x is x. We have four oxygens with a charge of two minus, so that will be minus eight. And the whole thing, x minus eight, has to equal minus one, which is the charge of the entire polytonic ion. So that tells us the manganese has to have a plus seven charge. So we're going to input that, and that's the only polytonic for which we didn't have the charge. So we have all the key players present, so now we get to look at the individuals. And for manganese, if you subtract the charges 7 minus 2, you end up with plus 5, specifically plus 5 electrons per manganese center. And for tin, you go from tin 0 to tin 4 plus, 0 minus 4 is minus 4 electrons per tin. Now you multiply this fraction by the actual amount of manganese and tin that you have, which in both cases is 1. You only have 1 manganese and you only have one tin. So you're dealing indeed with five electrons and four electrons in the reduction in oxidations, respectively. All right, so now we're going to come up with the lowest common denominator, which in this case is, is pretty much the same thing as saying that we're going to cross multiply the number. So we multiply the top fraction by four and the bottom one by five. And what that means is that because the reduction is being multiplied by 4, we add and multiply the corresponding reactant and the corresponding product by 4. The same way that for the oxidation, which is being multiplied by 5, we need to multiply the corresponding reactant and the corresponding product by 5. So we apply those changes. Now, when you have the same number of electrons on both sides, now you start looking at the oxygen. So uh, paying attention to what we have here, we have four oxygens, but we have four permanganates, so we have 16 oxygens altogether. And on the right side, we don't have any oxygens, so we need to add 16 waters to balance the number of oxygens on the product side. All right, now that means that we're dealing with 32 H. H is present on the right side. On the left side, we have no H's, so we're going to need to add 32 H's, and specifically, we need to add them in the form of H+. 
If you look at the overall charges, 32 times plus 1 is 32, 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. And so you end up with 32 minus 4, which is 28. And on the right side, you have 4 times 2, which is 8, 5 times 4, which is 20. And once again, you end up with 28 for the balance charge. And since that's the same for both, this is telling you that the reaction has been balanced correctly. All right. Let's do the same thing, but let's use the half redox method this time. So we have uh, permanganate going to manganese 2 plus. We have tin 0 going to tin 4. So we're going to separate those two equations into two halves. And we go ahead and balance the manganese and tins first. We have 1 and 1 on both sides. For tin, we have 1 and 1 on both sides as well. So what we go ahead is to go and balance the oxygen. So we have four oxygens on the left side. We need to add four oxygens on the right side of the equation. And we do that by adding four waters. The second equation doesn't have any oxygen, so there's nothing to be balanced there. So then we move on to hydrogens. We have eight hydrogens on the right side. We need eight hydrogens on the left side. That will be in the form of H+. And, okay, tin, we're basically done, done with. There's nothing to be balanced there. So now we use the charges to determine the number of electrons. We have a 1 minus charge for the 1 permanganate, an 8 plus charge for the 8 protons. 8 minus 1 is 7. And we have 1 manganese 2 plus on the right side, and that's the only thing with a charge. So that's a 2 plus overall charge for manganese. For tin, initial charge is 0, final charge is 4. So the difference, 7 minus 2, is 5. You're missing 5 electrons on the first equation. And those 5 electrons will go on the side that has the highest charge. 0 and 4, you're missing 4 electrons. And those electrons have to go on the charge with the highest charge, which is the tin 4 plus side. So we add those electrons correspondingly. And now what we do is we balance the electrons by multiplying them, multiplying the entire equations by the corresponding values. 4 for the top equation, 5 for the bottom equation. So now you have 4 permanganates, 32 protons, 20 electrons, 4 manganese 2 pluses, and 16 waters. And on the bottom you have 5 tins, 5 tins 4 pluses, and 20 electrons. Last thing to be done is you add the two equations together, which means that your 20 electrons will cancel out. And you only have protons on the left side of the first equation. There's no protons anywhere else. And you only have waters on the product side of the first equation. There's no waters anywhere else. So everything else comes down. And pretty much if you refer to what we did before for the direct method, we got the same results using the half redox method. So this is a preference on your point as to which method you decide to use to balance the equation. Okay, <clears throat> I'm going to show you now an example, uh, a very specific version of redox reactions known as disproportionation reactions. The disproportionation reaction um, characterizes itself by having a reactant that is metastable. So like looking at silver 2 plus, that's not a mistake, that's actually silver 2 plus. If you look at the diagram for silver, silver 2 plus is present in the red box off to the side from the main uh, diagram. And that means that silver 2 plus is metastable. It will react with itself to give you the upper portion of the diagram. So silver 3 oxide and the bottom portion, which is silver plus 1. So those are the actual products of this reaction. And the idea in the disproportionation is that you have the same reactant reacting with itself, forming different products. So I'm going to use the direct method to solve for this particular thing, and you have to tweak it a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to show you this. If you use the half redox method, uh, it's going to work out pretty much the same way that we did before for the other examples. Um, so I won't show you that one, but this one needs to be shown, the direct method. So you have to figure out the charges that you're dealing with. <clears throat> and so for Ag2O3, the oxygens have a 2 minus charge. Silver has a charge of x. The whole thing is neutral. 2 times x plus 2 times minus 2 has to equal 0, which means that 2x is equal to 6, which means that x is equal to 3. All right, now what you basically do is you balance anything that's not oxygen or hydrogen. Um, but the problem with that is that you have silver turning into two different kinds of silver. So it's not necessarily explicitly obvious how you're going to do that. Um, so the way you really apply it is by um, looking at the charges. Look at the charges first. 
you go from silver 2 plus to silver 3 plus and that's actually a change of one electron per silver and over here you have silver 2 plus going to silver plus 1 which is a change of one electron right? so it's 2 minus 1 and 2 minus 3 that's what's yielding the ratios um, now to determine what you're going to multiply this ratio with you focus on the products only you have two silvers on the product side for the first uh, comparison so you're going to multiply the top portion by two silvers and looking at the product of the bottom uh, comparison you only have one silver plus so you multiply the bottom one by one silver plus and this tells you how many electrons you're actually dealing with so then the next thing is to balance the electrons you need to multiply the bottom equation by two but you will only apply this multiple to the direct product don't touch the reactant yet because that's also being affected by the second reactant so you apply the two that we use to balance electrons only to the product and when you get to this point now you see and count how many silvers you're dealing with you have two on the first one two on the last one you have four silvers all together all right so now that you have that you can proceed as normal you can balance the oxygens like we did before we have three oxygens on the right side of the equation we need three oxygens on the left side so we're going to add three waters on the left side and now we have six protons on the left side and we have no protons on the right side so we'll add those six h pluses to balance the equation and if you look at the overall charges you have uh, four times two plus which is a plus on the left side uh, Ag2O3 is neutral, so nothing there. We have two Ag pluses, which will be a two plus charge, and six H pluses, which will be a plus six charge. Altogether, eight electrons. All right. So, as you can see, the reaction has been balanced correctly, but you have to perform the procedure a little bit differently than you saw for the regular processes. You could still balance this using the have redox method and it's a little bit more simplistic but you might need to go with the lowest ratios at the end so just make sure to check your answers okay so one more example just to make sure that you guys are okay with this we figure out the charges for um all the species we have one oxygen with two minus charge one chlorine with a charge of x and over here we have three oxygens with a charge of two minus and one chlorine with a charge of y they have to equal the overall charges so we have x minus 2 equals minus 1 for the first one we have y minus 6 equals minus 1 for the second one which means that your x equals 1 your y equals 5 all right perfect so now we use those charges to figure out the electrons 1 minus 5 is minus 4 1 minus minus 1 is plus 2 and so what you do now is you multiply the two equations to come up with the number of electrons. Uh, well, actually, first you multiply by number of products. You have one chlorine in the first product. You have one chlorine on the second product. So you multiply these fractions by one chlorine. And now you balance the electrons. You have to multiply the bottom one again by two. And so you also multiply the direct product by two. You don't touch the reactant just yet. And what you do at this point is you see how many chlorines you have on the product side. You have one from the first one, you have two from the second one, so you have three all together. So you will multiply the reactant by three to make sure that you have the same number of chlorines. And now we balance the oxygens. Three oxygens on the left side, three oxygens on the right side, the oxygens are balanced. Uh, hydrogens, you don't have any hydrogens on either side, so this is also balanced. So basically this reaction it's one of those ones that you might actually be able to balance just by looking at the um, at the reactants and products that you have, but it's not guaranteed to work out this way every time. All right, in the next video, I'll show you the comproportionation reactions, which will finish this entire lecture.